The Iron Sultanate is easily my favorite faction in this entire game. This is something that I have not kept a secret, like at all. In all of my Trench Crusade videos, I have snuck in a little reference to that. And this is also not a very rare sentiment. I think there's something very, very special about the Iron Sultanate. For me personally, it's because I really like Middle Eastern history, architecture. It's something I latched onto really early on in my life because really one source, uh, Assassin's Creed Revelations, which pulled me directly into the Ottoman Empire and the history of that, where it then spiraled into, you know, actual uh, sources with real historicity to it instead of Assassin's Creed, even though that's still a thing I enjoy as like a guilty pleasure. But seeing like Middle Eastern history and especially like Islamic representation, like the Islamic Golden Age and everything like that represented really, really well is rare, especially in like sci-fi, fantasy, like really anything. So massive props to the creators of this game. And I want to give an even bigger shout out to one of the game devs specifically, like by name, Thomas Purin, who I found because I am a lurker in the Tread Crusade Discord. I like to dig around in there for fun little lore details whenever I can, which is often. When I was looking for fun Iron Sultanate stuff, I found this. Please pause it to read his specific thought process in creating the Iron Sultanate, and I already respected both creators of Trench Crusade a lot. My respect for him shot up more than I thought it already could. I thought it reached max. It went up higher. So massive props, man. Thank you to my channel members for making all these videos possible, and a huge shout out to Nisafo for subscribing at the highest level. So who exactly are the Iron Sultanate? Well, the Iron Sultanate is really the main conglomerate force of all of the many different Islamic forces that are left in 1914 alt history, World War I. How did they get like this? Well, as everything, it all starts in the Crusades. Because as we all know, if you've seen anything on Trench Crusade, it all starts because some funny old Christian Crusaders took over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which was actually Muslim occupied. They found a bunch of artifacts that were smartly decided by the occupants to be hidden away. These artifacts, satanic in origin. They decided because of the whispers of these artifacts to make a deal with the other side, the other side being hell, to where Jerusalem was destroyed in creating a gateway to hell. The main Islamic forces in the area, many disparate groups and factions and nations, right in the main area of their headquarters and their homeland, a giant portal to hell opens, and this sucks. For 10 years, based on the timeline that were given in the lore primer, they got their shit rocked. It was loss after loss, pushback after pushback. We have a thing known as like the year of three battles as hell took over the Levant and they were really being run away from really their main region. But after 10 years of this, a miracle happened. Allah decided to grant his people a miracle where the iron wall was created. This is specifically divine intervention. Creating the lands of the Sultan of Rum, this giant iron wall was then already inhabited by people, as in a Sultan was already set up shop there, where then the call was set out for all the faithful, all those who are truly righteous, or really that quote, any who's Muslim, just get over here, come to safety, run over here, to where they got to the iron wall, the gate closed, and now they're safe. However, they're now in a giant, like, large, like, stupidly massive country-sized fortress, with the armies of hell constantly trying to get in. So it's manned with guns, cannons, artillery, snipers, as hell is always trying to get inside. To where, like, their entire way of life and their entire, like, warfare strategy is now built specifically around the wall. They've developed both hit and run and specific range military strategies. The wall allows them to do specific artillery strikes and ranged battles to where they can blast, but then they also specialize in hit and run like warfare, all specifically fighting in methods where they're trying not to be outside for too long. That's not to say they don't go outside the wall. They do lead expeditions because you do need to go outside and do things, things like trade or other situations where they want to gather certain resources or certain groups with specific goals in mind, something I'll get into later. But these are small groups that are let out by captains who are under orders from the Sultan, 
and they are again very trained in like hit and run and kind of taking these tactics but like mobile and they're much squa smaller squads they are much less of like the giant armies compared to many of the other factions at play in the world of trench crusade the main point i'm trying to get at here fighting the iron sultan it sucks like it's ass and so this is normally where i would talk about like the many different variant warbands However, I'm actually gonna do something a little different than I would normally do here. I wanna meld this with also talk about some lore and also units because the aspect of like the iron wall is so integral like I was getting into and also with like the key players and the reasons why they leave. One of the benefits of the iron wall is it really allows a large group of people to get together and kind of just hard focus stuff, which has the iron salt in it really advanced on certain scientific progress and just they have some really funky stuff and i love it one of these groups is the jabiran alchemists which is a war band you can run the jabiran alchemists are sourced from the house of wisdom as in as a real thing by the way in like history the Baghdad house of wisdom like a, a college basically it was a massive literal house of wisdom it was a really good place look into that it's a cool thing in history but i also hope they weren't getting up to like the things the jabiran alchemists are getting up to you know they do the normal things like medicine, learning, education, uh, a little bit of poisons, uh, monsters. They make monsters, giant bombs. That's also something they do. Cause uh, yeah, there's a funny thing they will occasionally do where they will capture those big spooky monsters of the forces of hell and they will take them back to their like alchemist houses and torture them slash like rip them apart to figure out what makes them tick because they want to figure out how to properly kill them better i do say this because this is a big old like important note they are not doing this so they can like use the evil forces against the forces of hell they're not like using hell's tech against them they're not like secretly harnessing dark powers they're not doing this they are literally actually studying this to make better tech the actual monsters that they've created are man-made, like through their own, which they have a few, like the Lions of Jabir, which are, you know, feline monsters that are like these works of art that are specially created and tailored from the alchemist that made it, or like the giant brazen bulls, which are, yeah, hulking monstrosities, which by the way, these things like, yeah, wholly artificial, they have no organs or really anything going on in there. If you want to kill one of these things, you have to fully destroy them. They have no vital weak spots, nothing. You have to make them fully immobile. And they lead expeditions as well outside of the, the Iron Wall. Because sometimes they need to get some more materials, they need to get some more monsters, or they hear that some other heretic forces or some demonic forces are also doing fucking alchemy shit and they want to stop it. Because they understand more than anybody the evil, evil shit their technology can do. Therefore, they want to put a stop to it. And this one is my favorite, I think uh, for obvious reasons, I literally said at the beginning, the Cabal of Assassins. This is run uh, in the Fortress of the Alamut, a real place. And this is run by Rashid al-Din Sinan, the, or the Old Man in the Mountain, which is again, a real guy. Like this guy actually existed. And you know, they are assassins, like the actual assassins in history that have existed. However, uh, fucky, I hope they weren't doing the same thing in history as well. These ones are using drugs to induce hallucinations in their enemies. They're also uh, uh, apparently time slipping. They have time slip powers. They could just teleport behind you and stab you. It's really cool. I really like them. I am specifically going to buy them. If I ever get the chance to play this game against real people, I am going to be running this warband, like 100%. They look super fun. And this warband leaves the iron wall because they need to go kill people. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then uh, I've really mentioned like all of the units at this point. There's like a couple like just soldiers or captains, like stuff like that. The last main one I do want to mention is the Janissaries, which are another actual historical thing from the Ottoman Empire. Janissaries are the elite fighting unit of the Sultan. And the Janissaries in Trench Crusade are taken from the children that they specifically take from the many different raids they do on heretic legion areas. They will take these kids, take them back to the Iron Wall, deprogram them from like Satanism and full hell worship, and then recruit them into the Janissaries and they will go into military service. 
for those of you who, who understand history stuff and maybe know who the Janissaries were, you might think and realize this is a much kinder reframing to what the Janissaries did in real life. Because this is very similar. Very similar. Just a little bit nicer. Which I'll, I at least appreciate. And I do think this part is important to mention. It was pointed out in my comments of my Heretic Legion one, but I did find this when researching this video. Uh, so I'm not just stealing from you, man, if you are watching this. But it is cool to note that the actual, like, regular people of the Heretic Legion, like, aren't people. Like, they're just regular dudes. They aren't all just frothing lunatic, like, crazy Satanists. They are just people sometimes. And so it actually goes against the religion of the Iron Sultanate to, like, kill everybody who just live in the land of, especially like, children who live in the land. They're not just going to raise it all to the ground. They want to give everyone, like, an actual chance to turn a new leaf. That is why they do that. And if they're going to do this and also gain more military might to fight back because God, God knows they need it. Like, oh boy. Which honestly, kind of the thing I like about the Iron Sultan that I like how actually kind of cool they are. I like how nice they are while still being um, kind of horrific in a way. They got some shit that still makes them like, oh, ugh. It, it's similar to uh, New Antioch. New Antioch is very similar in the way that like, you could still code them as very like good guy, but they still got some shit where you're like, okay. Okay, they're not as uh, unhinged about their religious shit as like the trench pilgrims, for example. You gotta have every different flavor, but uh, that's gonna be about it. So yeah, if you like this, like, comment, subscribe, uh, do all that stuff, uh, join my membership, and 